and he joins us from Chicago, Illinois right now. Hey, Josh. Good morning. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, great to have you here. I know that one of the breweries who's already signed this pledge is Goose Island, which is a Chicago original. Of course, now it's owned by InBev. But uh, but I, as I understand it, Goose Island has maintained their anonymity and still uh, makes some pretty good honker ale and, and whatnot. Uh, you know, I was at a music festival yesterday that they were supplying beer for, and they make great stuff. Uh, it was uh, a vastly improved festival thanks to their product. <laughs> <laughs> right. So in a nutshell, for me and Patty and everybody else listening, what is the pledge? Sure. Well, it, it basically revolves around the idea that you can't have great beer without great water. Um, you know, basically, clean water is essential to more than great tasting beer. It's critical for public health and for the health of a wide range of industries. Responsible safeguards protect uh, our product from upstream pollution and help us protect our downstream neighbors. You know, basically, these guys are uh, saying that they're going to speak out on behalf of the Clean Water Act and clean water protections. Um, and, you know, it makes sense. Like you said, uh, beer is 90% water. Um, it's the only uh, it's the only ingredient that uh, they cannot source from other places. A brewery is reliant on their water source. And so if their water gets messed up, their business gets messed up. So they have a, an important voice to uh, to share in this whole discussion. And it sounds like the brewers are not only saying that they're going to be conscientious and they're going to be part of the solution, but they're also calling on the government to take part in this, Right. They are. The first, uh, the first sort of active piece of the campaign was a letter that 20 of the brewers sent uh, earlier this month. Uh, asking for the president to step up and put out, um, this, this sounds a little nerdy, but uh, there, <laughs> there's an advisory that the EPA uh, has been sitting on for some time that clears up how the Clean Water Act is enforced as it relates to wetlands and uh, small streams. Uh, and those are really important. Uh, during the Bush administration, uh, there was a, a decision made that those uh, bodies of water were no longer protected by the Clean Water Act, which mm. obviously has a big impact on the bigger uh, bodies of water that we all rely on since uh, the, those those uh, are fed by these smaller streams and such. Uh, there's been, we're, we're a couple years late on uh, the Obama administration putting out those advisories so that people know how to enforce the Clean Water Act, and the brewers are, uh, are speaking out and saying it's time to, uh, to put these stronger protections in place. Josh, uh, for those people watching our video simulcast right now at eatdrinkexplore.com, we are showing a video clip that uh, the Natural Resources Defense Council has on the Clean Water Pledge page of your website. Uh, and boy, the list of brewers that are big, that are you're going through in this video, mm -hmm. uh, so many great names and uh, terrific products uh, out there. How did you get this big group on board? Well, you know, we like beer in Chicago. And so, uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're surrounded by a lot of states where there is a craft beer explosion going on. Michigan, in particular, yeah. is really amazingly fertile ground for craft beer, uh, for craft beer right now. And so we, uh, we started by reaching out to a couple of very big, very clearly sustainably minded uh, breweries nationally um, and in our, in our neck of the woods. So we talked to the folks at Goose Island. We talked to the folks down in Chico uh, at Sierra, Sierra Nevada. Nevada. Mm -hmm. uh, we reached out to, you were talking about Colorado breweries earlier. We reached out to uh, the folks at, at New Belgium. Uh, and it's just sort of expanded outward from there. You know, we saw a, a really fantastic Huffington Post blog from uh, Jen Bervier. Uh, with uh, the sustainability director at uh, New Belgium, where she was talking about some of these concepts. And it really crystallized for us that, you know, this is a, a powerful, powerful industry that, that isn't really out there talking about these issues very much. You know, who, who's going to question their favorite brewer? You know, their favorite <laughs> brewer but, we don't want to question them. Important, you know, my beer, the beer you love is... Uh, is impacted by this stuff that really carries a lot of weight. So, so how kind of rock stars in a lot of yeah. you know, in a lot of yes. ways? Yeah, you're right. 
Yeah. So they do. You're right. They do have some uh, clout. So how can other brewers who are hearing this uh, join, get involved with this? Well, they can they can uh, reach out to us at the Natural Resources Defense Council. Call any of our offices in uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, New York, or Washington D.C., and we'll get you routed to the right folks. Uh, we are definitely looking at expanding uh, the program and bringing folks on. I mean, this is a craft brewer program. Um, we're looking for you know breweries that that fit within that profile or have at least come out of that sort of a tradition um and we are definitely looking to expand that and get them involved in uh, speaking out for the clean water act hey josh aside from signing this pledge uh what tangible actions are the brewers then taking part in uh following that signing of the pledge at their breweries what are they doing like what differently practices what are practices they? yeah right right so so this is an entirely voluntary program and we are very focused on getting them involved in discussions of uh, clean water policy however most of the breweries that uh, that have been uh, engaged so far and that we assume will be engaged as we move forward are breweries that have already shown a really intense interest in sustainability um, if you look at for example, uh, the the work that many of them are doing on water efficiency. You know, they are they are very big water users, mm-hmm. and finding ways uh, finding ways to be more efficient in their brewery uh, to cut down on water waste is something that's really important, not just to their business, but to their own sort of sense of uh, the important the importance of sustainability. And so, we're talking to them about ways that we can help with uh, some of those issues moving forward. Um, But really, this is very much about getting out there in the public and talking about the importance of clean water, um, something that unfortunately has uh, has been more and more of a fight in recent years. There are a lot of chemicals Mm -hmm. used in brewing as well because sterilization is so important. If you don't have a clean tank that you're putting this beer into, you infect the entire batch. You don't want uh, that. You do not want that Mm -hmm. at all. So I have seen a lot of these caustic chemicals being used to you know to clean out all the brewing equipment and uh so i would then that has to drain somewhere (laughs) you know so there's that angle to it as well if they could use less but still keep the same level of sterilization Mm -hmm. maybe work on that a little bit Absolutely. And, you know, you talk to these guys, they are hardcore water nerds. I yeah, mean, they are. <laughs> You're right. They are really, really deep into this stuff. And when you talk to them about sterilization, that's something that they point to. They say, you know, we'd like to find better ways to do this. Mm-hmm. And, and we'd like to evaluate uh, better chemicals and better opportunities. Uh, so this is a problem that I think they're addressing. NR. DC.org, National Resources Defense Council. Josh Mogerman, live from Chicago. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the invitation. You guys have a great morning. You too. Best of luck with the initiative. We're back in just a moment.